picture of God pretty solid. And understand unconditional love, mercy, and grace. And he's that good. And preaching this kind of message, let me ask you guys, is this helping you? Or is this, yeah. guy, is this helping you get closer? Or is it kind of making you feel like, woohoo, I get to go sin now and it doesn't matter? Let me tell you something. Well, it doesn't, it doesn't. The opposite. I, I, I'll give you a little something on how this changed. I have always just despised tattoos. And when, so, when I see someone has it, I've always been like, oh, my opinion of you just dropped. <laughs> you know? And, and yeah. I'm, I'm ashamed to say that. Um, and my daughter loves tattoos. <laughs> and so she went and got a big one and she wanted to put it on Facebook. She was afraid though, the minute I saw it on Facebook, how I was going to respond about it. So she didn't and we went and visited and picked her up um, on our way to Thanksgiving. And she was like, hey mom, I have something I need to tell you about. And she reveals the tattoo. And I was like, wow, that's really pretty, Rachel. You know, I'm really glad you went to a really good tattoo artist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was horrible. Um, and she was like, really, Mom? And I said, are you happy with it? And she's like, well, I love it. And I said, well, you know, I'm not in, I'm not, it's, it's not my thing. But if it makes you happy, Rachel, I'm happy for you. And she was like, what has changed? <laughs> like, What's different? And I told her, you know, I've been going to this Bible study thing, Rachel. You Amen. know, and... The, the, the fact of the matter is, is, you know, this isn't a sin. This isn't, you know, something. And even if it is, that's between you and God. Um, truth of the matter is, your consequences are your consequences. One day you regret it, you'll regret it. But the fact of the matter is, I love you. And, um, and so she literally put on Facebook, I just want to reveal this now that I revealed this to my mom. And, but she literally was like, Tell me about this Bible study you're going to do. Oh, wow. Yeah. And That's so she great. Was, yeah. She told me she's going to start listening on YouTube. And oh, she's good. Going to share good. Amen. Well, Amen. She Amen. said, yeah. I'm seeing such a big difference between you and Dad and the way you guys are responding. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. That's great. Yeah, like what Peter said one time, you remember when Peter, or Peter, he's not here today, but the other Peter, um, he, he, said that, um, he said that, you know, before I was coming to these Bible studies, I was, I was really kind of dead. You know, but, but now it's like, you know, it's a whole other world. You know, it's like the lights went on. Yeah. You know, right? And, 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 and so that's, that's, that's what this does. It actually gives you a real peace with God. And, and that's where your peace has to come from. Yeah. Don't expect peace in the world because if your peace is coming from God, well, then your world could be falling apart and you're not. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. 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 yeah I, I, I'm telling you, I've got hard, I've had some pretty crazy things thrown at me and you know what I'm amazed on how I handled it mm. you know oh, yeah. crazy stuff you go to Delancey Street for two years <laughs> attack therapy every other day two hours attack therapy 12 guys in your face screaming at you <laughs> I couldn't huh? Delancey Street I went there it was the toughest pro tough, yeah. toughest drug yeah, program they don't call it a drug program they call it a rehabilitate yeah, like they call it um, 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 a re-educational facility. They don't like to call it a drug program. It's re-educational. And they, they just, huh? Grace and goodness and proclaims it for himself a lot is David. David says, like, I have set the Lord, I kind of, I have, I kind of forgot this verse, but he said, I have set the Lord always before me. Like, he's always setting the Lord before him. He's always saying things like, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. Oh, chase him down. He speaks grace to himself. He yeah. knows how to encourage himself in the Lord. Encourage oh, yeah. himself in the Lord. When he's totally down, he's like, But I'm looking, you know, the Lord is my shield, my strength. That's why we love the song so much. Because he's just like, God is my son. God is my shield. No good thing will be withhold from those who walk upright. He just focuses on the Lord. And so I thank you for reminding me of that. Yeah, well, you know, here's the thing. I mean, you just made me brought something to my mind. It, it's amazing that people think, yeah, but we sin. Oh, you know, yeah, uh-oh. Right. Like, oh, no. <laughs> right, right. And you know what? The, whole, the Bible says, when it says that there is no condemnation for those in Christ, he's talking to those that should be condemned. Well, he's saying, he's saying that. Why is he saying it? Because there's something to condemn, but there's none. 
When he says he will not bring a charge against his elect because it is him who justified you. The elect are the justified. That's you, the Christian. And he says he won't bring a charge against you. Why is he saying that? Because there should be charges. We're ready for that. When he says that, he, that we can come boldly to the throne of grace and receive mercy and grace any time of need, he's talking to those who need grace and need mercy. He's talking to you in your worst situation, scenario, worst possible scenario. Amen. People think that's for the dedicated and the super committed and the really obedient. The Bible says it's his obedience that makes us righteous, not yours. Amen. It says through one man, Adam, we all became sinners. And through one man and his obedience, we're all made, we're, we're, many are made righteous. Sin came in through Adam, but it went out through Christ. Yeah. yeah. And it went out. The Bible says if Jesus had not risen from the dead, we would still be in our sins. But guess what? He did rise from the dead, so you are not in your sins. And this comes, we access that grace by faith. Romans 5.1. You access that grace by faith. Whoo! Yeah, amen. Come on! And this is just the starting point. People think that's going to lead you into sin. No, that's the starting point for a whole new life. Abundant life comes from that realization. That's where it starts. Yes, right. People are people are Christian and they're not even there yet. And we are, we start from there. And now everything comes from there. Mm. That's the starting part. It's not something we're living from victory. Other people are trying to get one. Mm. Mm. Oh, and I call them sleeping Christians, man, trying to wake up. And recognize how good you got it. What do you think it means to be a savior? He's a savior because you can't save yourself. If we could start doing the right and stop doing the wrong, he wouldn't have to die for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Serious. Come on. Amen. Are you feeling me? Okay, yeah. let's look at the scripture. Let's look at this. Exodus 20, 3 through 4. Let's get into the word here. Exodus 23-4. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make yourself a carved image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above. Is that what you're... Or yeah. that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Right? Oh, can you see that? Yeah. Ten right? First now look, you shall not. Verse 13, you shall not, you shall not, you shall not, you shall not steal, you shall not give false sin, you shall not, you shall not. That's law, right? Yeah. You shall not. Mm. What is that implying? If I'm going to stand here and say, you better not. Or else. Thank you. Yeah. That's implying a curse. You better not, mm -hmm. or else, whoa, gritty teeth, man. And that's how people picture God, because they still see him as a point, finger pointing, you know, convicting, condemning, finger pointing, a spiritual nag on your case every time you sin. No wonder why they distance themselves from God. Who wants to be around a constant nag on your case every time you sin? I put distance between you and God. Okay, well, let's look again. Okay, let's go to 1 John 5, 4. That said, thou shalt not, thou shalt not, thou shalt not, right? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. What did I say? I'm sorry, sorry. I'm sorry. Wait, wait, wait. I'm sorry. Uh, Hebrews 8, 10, and 12. You believe right, you would do right. Trust that. Do you trust that? When you hear something else, something trying to pollute the grace of God, you know, just, you know, if I believe right, I will do right. The Bible says he will work in you to will and to do what pleases him. He works in you to that. You just believe that he will. You believe that he is in you, that you are a child of God already by, by birth. You've been born again. You've been, by birth, I am a child of God. And that's a new birth. It's a re, I've been born again. I'm a new creature. Look, Hebrews 8, 10, what is it? 8, 8 10, 10, 10 through 12. Okay, go for it. <coughs> for this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, declares the Lord. I will put my laws into their minds and write them into their hearts. 
and I will be their God, and okay. they shall be my people. Right. And they shall not teach each other his neighbor and each one his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for thy shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest. For I will be merciful towards their iniquities, and I will remember their sin no more. Now look Amen. at this. When we looked at Exodus 3 and 4, and, and, and even 7, those verses were saying, Thou shalt not, thou shalt not, thou shalt not. It was man-oriented. You better not. Yes. This is God oriented. Yes. He's saying, I will, I will, I will. It's not you shall not, you shall not, you shall not. He's saying, I will, I will. He's putting it on him before he was putting it on you. Mm -hmm. You better not. Now he's saying, I will do this. Mm. I will, I will. Not you shall not. Who? He said this in the Old Testament. Yeah, it's interesting here. I want you to see some. We talked about this before, but if you look, um, th this is um, this is actually this is actually. Uh, let's see. This is actually. It says um, verse eight says, "But God found fault with the people." See, the problem was with the people. The law was excellent. The law was perfect, right? Right. Eight verse eight says, "But God found fault with the people." The, the, the law was perfect. The problem was with the people. They didn't keep their end of the bargain. He made a covenant with them and they couldn't keep it. The law is perfect, but we, it's a high standard. Nobody can keep it. Matter of fact, the law wasn't just pick and choose. How well are you doing? You know, you're better than everybody else? You know, how are you doing compared to everybody else? No, the Bible says those who compare themselves among themselves are not wise. Right? So it's not about comparing myself, how well am I doing? I mean, after all, at least I'm not going to jail. At least I'm not, you know, at least, you know, you know, at least I'm doing this and this. And we could be like that Pharisee who says, at least I'm tithing and I'm praying three times a day. And I'm, at least I'm not like that guy over there. You know, we could be get boastful on our, our, our own good deeds. But he said, yeah. but the, dude, are you really keeping the whole law? Because that's what it calls for. He says, those who want to be under law, you got to keep do everything written in the law or yeah. you're under a curse. <laughs> that's what I'm saying, Galatians. How many laws are there? Six hundred and... Six hundred and thirteen laws. Yeah. yeah. Not to mention getting angry. <laughs> <laughs> so you see that? Look at this. Exodus 34, 7. Yeah. Six Let's go back to Exodus. Exodus. I'm looking because you notice what he said. We listened to that recording. If you notice what he said, he was, he was comparing the old covenant with the new covenant. Talking about how they said to stone them under the old. and the new covenant, we don't do that. We don't stone adulterers. We don't stone, we don't kill homosexuals, but that was, the, that was the, he commanded you to do that under the old covenant. Yeah. Exodus what? Huh? 34-7. 34-7. Yeah. Keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, and that will by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and upon the children's children unto the third and fourth he generation. He says he will by no, he, yeah, he says he by no means will clear the guilty. Right? Right. Are you feeling me? He will by no means clear the guilty. Okay? Oh boy. Here what we is, go. What is that? What does he mean by that? Huh? What does he mean by that? Jesus is you, you no means mean, clear the guilty. Jesus is the guilty. Means he's gonna punish you. You, you, you I mean you you're looking at punishment. You're under a curse. But this is the old testament. Right. Yeah. Exactly. That's where I'm going. Okay. Okay. okay? <laughs> Book, okay. Right, so it's that was Exodus thirty four seven, right? Yeah. Exodus thirty four seven. Correct. Right. Mm -hmm. Anyway, we were talking about even there in thirty four, he's an extremely long suffering God. Even yeah, you God. know what it means to be long suffering. Long suffering is. You heard of, some people just use in the other translations, newer translations, just use the word patience. patience yeah. But long suffering means I put up with a lot of your junk. Right. I'm long suffering. Yeah. Not short for you. Means I'll suffer on account of you Amen. and what you do. Yeah. That's long suffering. That's, that's just that's not patient. That's patient. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> long suffering. <laughs> Right? Yeah. Let's look at God. Let's see God that way, because that's how He identifies Himself. Yeah. He's saying, "This is me." Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. I want to get on the same page. Thirty-four. Thirty-four-seven. Yeah. No, and then you mentioned. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry, guys. All right. 
It's okay. I just get rolling and I don't even bother to look, go where we're at. So at 34.7, I want to read it again, okay? Um, All right, you ready? No, wait, wait, wait let, me, let, me, let me go. Let me 34.7, okay? 34.7, okay, hold on. Okay, it says, um, okay, so uh, he passed in front of Moses proclaiming the Lord, the Lord, the compassionate and gracious God, gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness, making love to thousands, and forgiving wickedness, rebellion, and sin, yet he does not leave the guilty go unpunished. Okay, so that's almost like a contradiction. He says, look, I'm, I'm suffering, I'm graceful, I'm loving, but I'm going to punish your sinfulness. Yeah. Which is it? Um, you, you know what I mean? No, because he's a judge. He's a, ju he's a judge. Yeah. He has to serve justice. He wouldn't be a good judge. He wouldn't say, if, if the judge just said, hey, you know what, I'm a yeah. grace judge. Yeah. You know, every criminal that comes before, I just give him a pass. Yeah. You know, no. We, we vote him out. He doesn't spoil his children. But if you look at the new covenant, how is he able to be loving, gracious, merciful, and also not let the guilty go unpunished? Help me out. It's in Romans Jesus. three twenty three. Jesus. In Christ. Jesus. Yeah. Jesus. Romans three, chapter three. That's Romans. why now you look at what we read in Hebrews eight. What we read in Hebrews uh what, what was it? Hebrews eight twelve. We just read went there, but I want you to look at this part because this I, I'm making what the connection part? with the old and the new. Yeah. What part? E A twelve. It says, it, "He said there, I will no my no. I will by no means will I clear the guilty." What does he say in the new covenant? I will be merciful to their unrighteousness. Hello. Big difference, right? Hello. Yeah. <laughs> he says, "I'm merciful. I'm merciful. I'm, just, I'm gracious, but I'm not going to let the guilty go unpunished." Here he says, "I'm going to be merciful." To their own righteousness. That was just that was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Are you feeling me? Yeah. Where you want to be? You want to go under law? You want to go under grace? Because under grace, he's going to be merciful to your unrighteousness. Mm -hmm. Under law, he says he's not going to let you go and punish. That's where you find yourself under a curse. But in the new covenant, Jesus became a curse for you. You know the Bible says that Jesus became a sin. He, he became sin for you that you might become the righteous of God in Christ. He became sin for you. The Bible also says that he became a, that he became a curse for you. So he became a curse for you. He became sin for you. Mm -hmm. He took your place with Barabbas. When Barabbas yeah. was set free, Jesus took his place. Jesus took his place. Yeah. Yeah, that's what he does. And he had nothing to do with Barabbas and his good deeds. No, no, he yeah, he just received it. He just received his part. He just had to believe. You know, it's like if I'm sitting, if I'm sitting in my jail cell and I'm waiting to go that cross that they put Jesus on, I believe it was Barabbas. And if I'm waiting to be put on a cross, and then all of a sudden they come to my door and they say, "Hey, they open up my door and they say, hey, Barabbas, come on, you're free, man." You Someone took your place. And I'm like, "Yeah, right. Get out of here. You guys are clowning me. I'm going to get up. You guys close the door." You know, I have to believe it and react on it. Yeah, yeah. To be set free. Otherwise, you know, well, let me tell you, you guys. When I'm telling you, you got to believe it and act on it. So you can really be free. Amen. <laughs> really? Yes, Don't let this cloud, there's a lot of junk out there, but they'll make sure it's going to cloud this. You can, you can hear this ten times. I could talk about this every week. But then one guy says one thing and it's like, wait a minute. Was I wrong? You know, it, it, it'll, be, it'll confuse you because they, they, they throw scriptures in there. Yeah. And here's the thing. I like to tell people, you know, heard of the Emancipation Proclamation where the blacks were set free. Abraham Lincoln signed an emancipation to set all the blacks free, right? Awesome. These guys were slaves. They had vicious slave masters that would, that would beat them and rape them and take advantage of them. And horrible things. Not to mention they were pulled away from their homes in Africa and brought here against their will. You know, and, and, and now they're set free. But you know what? Some of these masters, they didn't tell them. They were still in bondage. They were still in bondage to their masters because nobody told them, you've been free. The truth will make you free. And that's why the truth will set you free. You, I'm telling you, I'm here telling you, you have received a spiritual emancipation proclamation. Jesus has set you free. He saved you from yourself. Hallelujah. And we got many people that are still living not to listen to the wrong master. Mm -hmm. Telling them that they're not free. The Bible says you have been set free. It's for freedom. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Galatians chapter 5, I believe it says it's for freedom you've been set free. But don't use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Mm -hmm. Jesus told the same thing. The woman caught, the woman in the caught me after adultery. He said, neither do I condemn you, but go sin no more. Sin no more. Mm -hmm. now, now, that's not talking about sinless perfection. No. That's talking about... Change your lifestyle. Mm -hmm. 
This doesn't fit who you are. You're not condemned anymore. I see you different. See yourself the way I see you. Go walk that. The enemy is keeping them in the yeah. Well, Me too! The enemy, but also, like you said, we some are. people have never been told the truth. And those of us who know it, it's important that we get out there and tell them. They live hey. by Old Testament. They, they, they live under the covenant, they yeah. Live, they live just by tradition. Yeah. This is life, right. you know. Right. There's... There's no other, you know, when you're dead, you just go to the ground. Exactly. There's a, especially in the Bay Area, I mean, there's a lot of people who just don't even know the gospel. They don't know the Me too, you have no idea. For years, for years, I would go three, I remember specifically, I go two, three, in, in the apartment where I'm living now. This wasn't like a whole, you know, it's maybe 10 years ago, I don't know. You know, but... Um, I would. I remember going two, three days where I would watch these TV ministers and I would read my Bible and get all spiritual and stuff going. And then all of a sudden, because of some sin in my life, all of a sudden I'm like, I can't even read my Bible. Mm. I, I'll watch something else. Mm. I just put God on the shelf because I feel so condemned. Mm. And the Bible says when your heart condemns you, he's bigger than your heart. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Amen. Stop it. The devil, that's the devil. You're entertaining his thoughts and you're totally useless to God in that sort of yeah. condition. He can't use you. Amen. Dylan could have a real serious problem. He's going through something. Here I am because I'm so stuck in myself and I can't even communicate to God. You can't I can't even else. help him. I'm useless to God to help my brother here because I'm so preoccupied with my junk. Amen. God says never go there. Jesus paid for that junk. You have been cleansed and you are righteous. The Bible says you've been created righteous and truly holy. That's who you are. Stop thinking you've got to approach me in your holiness. Approach me in mine. Yeah. Mm. That's good. Amen. Those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. If you come to him all unworthy and feeling, you know, ungodly and so, so you know, filthy. If you come to him like that, you're coming to him in the flesh. Oh, wow. He says you must come to me in, in the spirit. Yeah. That's why you can come boldly to the throne of grace and receive mercy and grace any time of need. Come boldly, chest out, because my chest is covered with the righteousness of the breastplate of righteousness. Amen. 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 Yeah. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. Telling you. Yeah. That's you think I don't know? It's on YouTube, brother. It's on YouTube. It's on YouTube. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Also in 8.12, you didn't read the last part, but B says, And their sins and their lawless deeds I will remember no more. Yeah. I feel like I've seen that for the first time. That's crazy because we remember our like you're saying, we re we remember our sins and lawless deeds. True. Mm -hmm. And it's leave. Satan that wants you yes. to remember yes. your yes. sins. He is the accuser. Well, you, if, if you look at what if you look at Romans 8. And, and then it's repeated in Romans 10. Romans 8. Hebrews, says Hebrews, it's Hebrews. Roman, uh, yeah, I'm sorry. Well, Hebrews. If you look at Hebrews 8, it says the same thing that he says in Hebrews 10. But in Hebrews 8, it says God is saying it. And then in Hebrews 10, it's um, Holy about Spirit. You, you won't remember your sins anymore. You won't, you, you, right? When he says that, in Hebrews 8, look at it. Hebrews. Uh, it's like 16, 17. Uh, oh, no, no, no. It's like 10. Uh, no, it's uh, 15. 10, 15. 10, 15. Yeah, 15. The Holy Ghost says it. Also. And the Holy Spirit also bears witness to us after. Did you hear that? Go back. And the Holy Spirit. Oh. Now, look, in Romans 8, it says it's God saying this. And in Romans chapter 10, it's repeating the same thing. It's saying the Holy Spirit testifies to it. Now, most people think that God is up there not holding my sin against me, but the Holy Spirit is here convicting me. He's saying they both think alike. Because here it's saying if God says this, and over here it says the Holy Spirit testifies to the same thing. He's on this, they're both on the same page. Stop thinking that the devil is your spiritual that, I mean that the, that the Holy Spirit is your spiritual nag on your case every time you sin. The Bible says that the fruit of the Holy Spirit is joy and peace. If something is stealing your joy and your peace, it is not the Holy Spirit. So it's said right. again, it's said <laughs> twice. Huh? It says this, Hebrews 10, 16, and 17. It says, this is the covenant that I will make with them after the days, declares the Lord. I will put my laws on their heights, 
hearts and yep. write them on their minds. Then he adds, I will remember their sins and their lawless misdeeds no more. Exactly. That's iniquities is the word. The iniquity is the worst kind of sin. Yeah, did, did you hear Dylan? The iniquities. He says there's sins and iniquities. Iniquities there, is there's, another translation. There's sin, there's transgression, there's uh, um, trespass. trespasses. Yeah, yeah, there's sins, trespass, trespass. transgression, and this, there's iniquity. Iniquity is the worst. Okay, sin is basically uh, uh, missing, missing the, the mark. mark. And, and, and trespass is basically crossing the line. Okay, and then there's transgression, and then there's iniquity, which is the worst possible sin that there is. He did it. He and he, he's covering them all, but just by the worst sin. your sins, iniquities, he says all of it. All of it. God. That, that's why. That's why no you hear people teach that he said, "No, just come the way you are. It doesn't matter what you've done in your past. No matter what, how you know to just come and receive Him." And they tell you to come in that way. But now that you're Christian, uh oh, you better walk on eggshells now, because God will deal with your sin now that you're a Christian. It was dealt with at the cross. That's yeah. how you come in. That's how you stay. It's much more, not your much sins less. Dealt with at the cross. Yeah, much more. How much, much more? It says that if he died for you when he was enemy, how much more he'll do for you now that you're his friend? It's more, not, not, not less. less. It's not less. Yeah. Yeah. Help me. Man. Oh yeah. And Colossians three three says we are hidden in Christ. You are hidden in Him. You know what it means to be hidden? Somebody means protection. When I read that, I read hidden in Christ. You know what I think of? I think of of of, of um of the Jews when the Germans were killing Jews. And some of the Germans had a sense of compassion, and they tried to, and they had friends that were Jews, and they didn't want to see them killed, so they hid them in their house under the floorboards, and they hide them in their house, and they hid them to keep them safe for their protection. And that's what this means, you are hidden in Christ. That's what I think about when I hear that you're hidden in Christ, it's for your protection. He's got you secure, you're safe. The devil can't find you. The de yeah. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Well, it says if he, God is in you, who can, he's great, uh, he was in you, he's greater than he is in the world, right? Yeah. And if God is for you, nobody can be against you, nobody. Our life is hid with God in Christ Jesus. Oh, that's it. And Colossians 2, 9 through 11 says you are complete in Christ. Complete. Huh? What part of complete do you not understand? I mean, complete means what? Complete. Semi-complete? Yeah. Or kind of, sort of, you know, a little bit of treatment? Or does it mean cured? Mm. Who mm. to come and say you're completely healed? Yeah. Oh yeah, completely <laughs> healed. <laughs> but but, but you guys take this medicine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you think about it. I That's don't right. take medication for something I don't have. Sure. Right. 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 <laughs> Creates all kinds of problems, side you, effects. Yeah. You guys come next week and be early because I, I collected three things. I don't have time to do it right now, but I collected three things. My three three favorite things I like to teach on. I told you is like who you are in the spirit. We are spirit, and that's why we don't really feel so so spiritual. Is because it's in your spirit. We feel. It's we don't go by feelings. Okay, if you go by feelings, you're going to be up, down, up, down. You're going to think God is mad at you. He's not, you know, pleased with you. He's, you know, you got to go by who you are in the spirit. That's how you stay on top of things. That's how you keep your head out of the clouds. Okay, you realize who you are in the spirit, and that's how God sees you. Let me see me there. Okay, and number number two, it's and number two, it's the love of God. How God is never going to ask you to do something He won't do for you. You can read the love chapter, and, and the love chapter. Uh, three children it talks about what uh, what love does. It love is patient. Love is kind. It always protects. It always sees the best. It always hopes the best. It doesn't keep a record of wrongs. All these things in the love chapter. But the Bible says in First John, it says that God is love. So that's giving you. People think that's how we should be, but no, that's how God is with you. You got to receive it before you can give it. And that's what you got to understand about love of God. These are revelations. When I understand it's spirit that I'm transformed. It's spirit where I'm a new creature. It's a spirit where I'm born again. It's spirit, 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 and I'm now a spirit man. And that's where my focus is. Okay? I don't always act right. I don't always think right. So I don't act right. But when I think that my self tuned into who I'm in the spirit, my actions will follow. You see? So that's spirit. That's revelation. You got to get that. Number two is the love of God. Understand he's, he's, he's leading by example. He's not going to ask you to treat anybody any better than he's going to treat you. If he tells you to only turn evil with evil, return evil with good, he's going to do that for you. He's not going to return your evil with evil. Oh, boy. <laughs> You did wrong. Oh boy, that turned. You know, oh boy, I got nothing for you. No, no. He's going to return your evil with good. Yeah. I'm sorry. Fair, not a fair weather God, all weather God. Right? Yeah. Not a fair weather friend, all weather friend. They're for you through thick and thin. 
Especially when you're doing wrong. I want you to know, come to me. It's a sick, we need a doctor. Right? Yeah. So, and that's number two. And number three is, is what I talk about between before and after the cross. And I have these three clips. I have one that's eight minutes, one that's seven minutes, and then another one that's like 12 minutes. And it's those three. I, I collected these this week. I said, you know what? I should try and find tapes for all these. I, I, I kind of wanted to do it today, but I, I want to make sure, you know, I, I, would, I, I didn't go there. I had a couple places I could go, go today. I kind of went here because it looked like there weren't so many people here at first, and we weren't really, you know, so I went another direction. I want to have that when we got a lot of people because you want to hear this. So come next week. Be here next week. Be early because I'm going to play these three clips and we're going to expound on them. We're going to talk about them and I'm going to let you hear these because we don't really have time now. I wish I could. But um, you can hear one of them. If anyone happens to be late, you can always say go to the YouTube. Yeah. yeah. That's true too. That's true. Yeah. But I have those clips. I want you to hear those because right. it, it's Andrew Olmack and Andrew Farley and they're expounding on these. And oh. they're, they're saying what I'm saying, only they say it better than I ever could. Mm. You know, so um, yeah. You want to hear one of them? You want to hear, <laughs> yeah, you want to hear, you want to hear a short one? Uh, short, do you want to hear? Do you have time for a short one today, or one of them? No, I'd rather do okay. them all at once. Okay. You know, because okay. all I want to finish okay. is from five Okay, so he needs five okay. minutes too. Okay. okay, let me go to one more play. Go to go to Philemon. I want you to see this. Philemon. Because mm. remember what I said about being set free and and knowing yeah. that you're free, that the yeah. masters don't tell it. Masters don't tell them they're free, right? <laughs> Philemon, it's at the end of Paul's letters. It's like, I think it's in the last of his letters. It's the first book I read in the Bible because I knew I could read one real quick. I'll give you a, I'll give you a little Bible study. Holy woman of God. What uh, chapter? Paul's letters. Only one chapter. Paul's letters. Only one chapter. You, you have Matthew. I don't know. The Gospels are Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Those are the Gospels. Those are written, written by four, four different people telling the life of oh, six. The book of Acts. Listen, you guys. The book of Acts is part two to the book of Luke. Luke wrote. He, Luke, of all the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Luke is the only one that wrote a part two. Acts is also written by Luke. You got the book Gospel of Luke, and then you got Acts, which is part two. Then John wrote two parts. Then it goes into Paul's letters. Romans through Philemon, 13 letters are all Paul. Paul's letters are back to back. Okay? So you got Paul's letters. And then it jumps into Hebrews, which is anonymous. We don't really know who wrote Hebrews. Most people think it was Paul, but we don't know for sure. So they put Hebrews as a transitional chapter. Okay? Transitional between Paul's letters and the other disciples. Peter, James, John. You know, they're, they're, they're letters. Okay, Jude. Right? So you got... Paul's letters, 13 letters, Romans through Philemon, and then you got Hebrews, which is anonymous, and then you have, are you getting this? Yeah. This is good to know, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, and then you got the Peter, James, John, and, and these other, uh, James, first, I think it's James, and then Peter, and then, and then uh, John. John, and, and Jude. Jude. Yeah, right? And then you got the book of Revelation. So there's a little kind of let you get a feel of your Bible. They kind of know, because I didn't know that for for a long time. I, I really didn't even know that all Paul's letters, I thought they were kind of scrambled in there. I didn't know they were back to back. It was all Paul's letters. You know, I didn't know that. Oh. You know, you, you learn this stuff. So um, I just throw that out there. Henry, huh? The Lord gave me, there's a sister here who didn't know her Bible very well. And the Lord gave me a revelation. Like, cause she couldn't find out, like, whether the book was the new or the old. And then the Lord showed me, if, it, if there's an E in it, it's in New Testament. Like Philippians, mm. Ephesian, Galatian. So it has an E in it. It's, I A N? Yeah, I'm yeah. just telling you. Exodus is Old Testament. No, 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 no. For New mean? Testament. If New there's Testament. an E in it, it's like I A N. It might just be a new brother. Oh, an I A N? Yeah, it's oh, an E. I A N. It's I -N. Just to help anyone. Like Thessalonian. Galatians, Ephesians, Thessalonians, Colossians. That's good. That's if good. If E is in it, good. it's in the it's in New Testament. That's good. That's good. I that covered. <laughs> okay, now look. So, okay, wait a minute. Well, I know it's in. It's just before Hebrews. Just before Hebrews. Yeah. Yeah. Only 25 yeah. verses. Pretty easy to. I know, I can't even find it. It's, it's before Hebrews. There it is. It's one page. It's only one chapter. It's, it's hiding. Okay. <laughs> now, look at this. Okay, you ready? Yes. Go. Okay. First. Now, what's going on here? It uh, starts at verse 8. It says, Paul's plea for Onesimus. Oh, okay. okay? I we were verse now, I want you to see this. It says, um, it says therefore, although I, in Christ, I could be bold and order you to do what you ought to do. He says, uh, he says, mm -hmm. although in Christ, I could be bold and order you to do what you ought to do. Right. Yet I appeal to you on the basis of love. That's how God is dealing with us. He doesn't want to order you to do it. He says, you shall not. He's not doing that. 
Okay? Yet I appeal to you on the basis of love. Okay? I then, as Paul, an old man and now also a prisoner of Christ, I appeal to you for my son Onesimus. Now he's a slave who ran away from his master, Philemon. Philemon was his master who he ran away from. But Paul is a friend of Philemon. And so when Onesimus, I guess he got arrested, I guess runaway slaves get arrested, okay, for running away. So now he's arrested, and now he's in the same jail as Paul. And Paul starts ministering to Onesimus and wins him over to Christ. So now he's sending him back to Philemon with this letter. Okay? I appeal to you for my son Onesimus, who became my son while I was in chains. Formerly he was useless to you, but now he has become useful both to you and me. That was you. Before you were a Christian, you were pretty much useless to God. But now yeah. that you're a believer, you are very useful. Yeah. Okay? I, are you getting this? Yes. Yeah. I am sending him who is my very heart back to you. You are the very heart of God. The very heart of Christ right here. God says, I'll take out that heart of stone. I'll give you a heart of flesh. He gave you a new heart. Yeah. He says, I'm sending Okay? Um, I would have liked to keep him with me that he could take your place in helping me while I'm in chains for the gospel. But I do not want to do anything without your consent, so that any favor you do will be spontaneous and not forced. I love that. That's what God wants from me. He doesn't want a forced relationship. He doesn't want, doesn't want it spontaneous, and necess- out of necessity. How does he say about tithing? Don't do it out of oh, necessity. Yeah. Don't, don't be a giver out of necessity or because of grudgingly, mm-hmm. not because you have to. Right. He wants, he loves a cheerful right. giver. And that, doesn't right. address, right. and that doesn't just apply to tithing. That doesn't just apply to giving. That applies to your nature of God in you, where I'm coming from. Yeah. 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 That's why he talks about you cannot serve both God and mammon. That's not just talking about money and material things. That's talking about anything. You can't, you can't, you're going to let go of one or the other. You see, whenever he's talking about money, he's talking about just our frame of mind. Look. Perhaps, yeah, perhaps the reason he was separated from you for a little while was that you might have him back for good. You see that? Mm -hmm. See, that's why people say, why doesn't God just get rid of evil? Why does he just do away with evil altogether? And he says, and and, uh, Oshoziba says that he'd rather bring good out of evil than get rid of evil altogether. Because he's omniscient, he's omnipotent God. There's nothing he cannot do. If he wanted to get rid of evil, he'd get rid of it. Bam! But he chooses to bring good out of evil rather than get rid of it altogether. Wow. Right? So he says that he was away for a while so that you can get him back for good. That's redemption. Yeah! That's okay? Perhaps the reason he was separated from you is that you might get him back for good. No longer a slave, but better than a slave, a dear brother. See, that God doesn't want mm. slaves. Jesus said, I don't call, him, call you slaves, I call you friends. He doesn't want you. We are sons first and servants second. Always remember that. Sons first, sons second. We're children who want to serve God. Like Paul, in all of his letters, he starts out with saying, I'm a bond servant, I'm a bond servant. Peter says it too. He says, I'm a bond servant. Jude says it too. I'm a bond servant, bond servant. A bond servant is somebody who chooses willingly. Willingly. willingly he said, the master set you free because you've been a emancipation proclamation. But some of these, these slaves, they had good masters. And they signed on legally to sign a document to say, I'm, I'm going to serve you and I'm going to stay under your... Put, and and it, it was the willingly. Nail, they put the nail in the ear. That's yeah, and that's, that's what God wants. Way. God wants willing people, yeah. not have to, not forced. Right? Okay, let's end with this. Better than, he said, better than say, but a dear brother. He is very dear to me, but even dearer to you, both as a man and brother to the Lord. So if you consider me a partner, now look at this. If you consider me a partner, welcome him as you would welcome me. If he has done you any wrong or owes you anything, charge it to me. That's Jesus. Amen. If you do anything wrong, if you do any sin, he, it is charged to him. That's what the Bible means when he is now, in, he's your advocate. He is now interceding for you. That means it goes on his account. Amen. Yeah, that's salvation. You can a picture of salvation there. Sometimes you got to read in between the lines to see, you know, when you're leading from grace, you can spot these things in there. Amen. That's a grace. That's a picture of grace. That's salvation. That's God with me. If Paul's doing that for him, where's he getting that from? Because he knows that's God with him. You can treat people like that. You can return. You can give that because you've received it. Amen. 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 Go ahead. Oh, beautiful. Uh, okay. Pretty good stuff, huh? Amen. Wow. Look at, look at the last verse there. Uh, he says, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Yeah. That's how he ends. That's how he ends. He, he ends, ends with grace. He ends every letter that way. Good look mm-hmm. at 13 letters. He begins every letter with grace and he ends every letter. You'll find grace within the first paragraph and you'll see grace at the end of every letter too. He begins and ends with grace. All Paul's letters are like that. Amen.
It's really good to be back with you guys, Sandy and I. We we, uh, we miss you, and we enjoy being here with you. And uh, we enjoy hearing the Word, the Word of God. Uh, I can assure you, uh, wherever we go, wherever I've been, I don't get to hear the Word of God like we get to hear it right here. Amen. It's awesome. Uh, you're... You're very uh, blessed by God to be sitting at these tables hearing it. Uh, there's a couple of things that I want to just go over with you briefly. Uh, the first thing is is that uh, I've received this card, cards this morning from Brother Dylan. And I appreciate Brother Dylan so much because of these. Uh, this is a card that is really... It's actually grown. It's, it's had a few changes, right? Yeah. But these changes are awesome. And literally, the plan of salvation is on the back of the card. It's incredible. I could easily lead somebody to Jesus looking at the back the of the card. Are the scriptures are there. Uh, probably most of these scriptures you know by heart. If you don't, you can easily refer to them. And... I want to encourage you. I'm going to pass this box around, okay? Yeah, thank you. And I want you to take as many for, as many cards as you would like, okay. okay? If if we run out, I'll I'll get some more printed, okay? And I know that there's also been a request for some of the other cards that I've shown you before, that the death and life cards. Yeah, yeah. I have I'll, I have I'll that at home. I have that at home, but it's yeah. Okay, yeah. and uh, okay, we'll bring more. As many as you want, take them. I don't care if they sit on your dresser for a few weeks and then all of a sudden you're like, oh my gosh, I need to take these cards and use them. Okay, I'm going to pass those around. Take as many as you want. Thank you. The other thing I wanted to just confirm the word uh, that Henry was saying. The Lord gave me this word yesterday, uh, well actually over the, over the last week or two, but it very much agrees with what... Henry is saying, it's the word of God. It says, the weapons of our warfare okay, are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. And that's just like Henry was, Henry was saying, this is not about, I feel it, I feel it, I feel it. No, it's about what, has, what God has done in the spirit realm mm -hmm. okay now there's a lot of wars and a lot of fighting and a lot of bickering a lot of things that are said uh, with the mouths of people that are, are brutal okay but these are things that we can take in the spirit realm and agree with what God says because what he says is truth and it is a greater truth than what we feel, okay? Uh, you might not feel saved, but you are. So, uh, you know, keep your keep your feelings in check with the Word of God, and and pull down those strongholds because what we're fighting for is not life on this earth, okay? We're not. What, our fight and sharing the gospel with others is the fight for eternal life. That he that is given freely. All we have to do is believe, right? Uh, I'm really excited about what's going on right here in this group. We, there's there's a lot there's a lot going on. The last thing I wanted to share with you uh, was that I've been praying about starting a somewhat of a ministry or work in Tucson, Arizona. And I've thought that about the 18th of January, which is a Friday, Henry and I uh, would fly to Tucson and we'd have a meeting there. And Henry would share the same words that he's been sharing with us here. What do you think of that? Amen. Is that, is that okay? Is that good? Yeah. You're not going to be back on Sunday, right? We'll no. be back here on Sunday. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's what I said. Yeah. I, I see there's a condition. 
Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> gave the secret sauce. Gave... <laughs> <laughs> the it is the secret sauce, bro. Yeah, there will be right. people Sounds there that I've known uh, who need to hear this word. <laughs> and, is it a church? Or, or? There are people who who go to church and who are yeah. Christians. Maybe some you know, are not. Oh, okay. Rich, yeah. we'll be here praying for you guys. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll we we will indeed be both be back for Sunday morning. Uh, that's one of the things that we we both wanted to make sure. Uh, I don't want to take away from what's going on here. So, uh, but the last thing that just added to that was that uh, Henry shared that with a few of you, and I want to make something very open and very clear. And that is, is that if uh, you pray about it and you feel like you would like to join us there, I, I invite you. Oh wow! Okay, when, I invite you. You're what? You're welcome. January 18th. January 18th. Oh wow! Well. It's a Friday, so you know you could. We're, I just tentatively in my mind. I haven't even looked into this yet, but we would fly out Friday afternoon or evening, have our meeting Saturday, and then fly back Saturday afternoon, okay. Saturday night, whatever whatever we can work out. Wow! And just see what happens. It's it's kind of like a mini mission. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So if you feel like going on a mini mission, and you wanna and you wanna go, praise the Lord, you're welcome. Amen. A few, a few of you asked me about that, so I talk, I can I That's asked. Good. That's Great. good. Thank yeah. You. Thank you. Yeah. 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 So um, you know, think praise the Lord for what's going on. Let me just say a quick prayer to dismiss us, and uh, yeah. God is so good to us, isn't he? Amen. Yes. Amen. Lord, we thank you. We're so grateful. We thank you for salvation. We thank you for the grace, for your blood, for the cross, and for your resurrection, Lord. And for your redemption, Lord, for us. We indeed, Lord, have been born into your kingdom. We are grateful, Lord, to be your servants. We are grateful, Lord, to be your very uh, sons and daughters, your heirs, Lord, to the kingdom of God. Let us share this with others, Lord, from day to day, as we become even more enthused and more inspired by your grace, Lord, that is living within us, Lord. We thank you for these words. Let them be rooted and grounded in our hearts. And let us, Lord, be faithful stewards, Lord, to share the gospel with others in our life. We pray this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 And he is the cure. He is not the treatment. Yeah, we're not on layaway. <laughs> You've been we're redeemed. Say so. Henry, you <laughs> might want to tell the group about over there. Oh,